I know how to swim. Fade in. Interior warehouse, the Muse, Brooklyn, morning. A 6,000 square feet with 30 foot ceiling warehouse space that is a circus school and event facility. For this week, it is location set of the new action film, The Escape. Candace Hawkins, a 40 something African American, well dressed, and determined executive producer of the film, walks in with a steady stride through the offset area of the Muse. She walks past the area sectioned off for the stunt performers on her way to her office area. She passes by the stunt team's holding, a section of the space with folding chairs and a case of water. The stunt team have gone through hair and makeup and are in the area preparing for their scene. Stunts are up first today, a fight scene into a circus aerial rope drop from a truss system 25 feet in the air. As Candace passes by the stunt team, two African-American males, two Asian males, and one white female in their holding area, one of the stunt performers looks a little off and catches her eye. She passes by the performer sitting on a chair and then backs up to take another look at her. What is that on your face? Mary Jo, a 26-year-old slim and fit white woman, wearing tight black jeans, a long black sleeve fitted shirt, and high top black canvas sneakers, looks up to see who's asking her a question. Just the matching makeup. Mary notices it is the executive producer. She stands up and extends her hand in a handshake gesture. Hello, I'm Mary Jo, or Mary, Claire Stunt Double. Camera is medium shot on canvas over the back of Mary's shoulder. We do not see her face. Albert Morgan, a fit, well-built, 48-year-old white male who looks like he has spent a day too long in the sun, a former gymnast and martial artist who is the stunt coordinator on the film. Albert sees the executive producer and his stunt double talking and walks over to the two women, coming up from behind Mary and stands next to her. Why is your stunt double in blackface? The camera tracks around from the back of Albert and Mary, seeing Candace's face to cover Candace's shoulder to reveal Mary's face a white woman's face with patches of brown foundation all over her face. She looks like a bank robber who put on dark makeup to be hard to see at night. It's not blackface. Mary here is a stunt double. She's doing the fight and, most importantly, the aerial gag. Our actor Claire is black and the character is black. Why doesn't she have a black stunt double? Isn't she half black? Candace shoots Albert a raised eyebrow, what did you just say, look, that your mother would give you that made you clean your room in silence. Mary is qualified. She's a wonderful stunt woman and an excellent aerialist. What the gag needs. There aren't any black aerialist stunt women. This entire exchange is happening at the stunt team holding area. All of the stunt guys hear what is being said between Candace, Albert, and Mary. Each stunt guy has a different reaction towards the conversation, illustrated in their facial expressions and body positions sitting in the folded chairs. Candace is put back by what Albert just said. She can't believe what was just said to her. Candace turns and looks at the stunt team. Her eyes are saying, a little help here. Really? No one knows a person of color who's an aerialist. Everyone is silent. Small shakes of the head with eyes not quite looking at Candace. Marcus, a muscular, six-foot-tall, dark-skinned African-American stuntman, can't take it anymore. I guess Tanisha Baker wasn't available. Two others, Raymond, a slim and athletic-built African-American stuntman, and Johnny, a lanky, medium-built Asian stuntman, look up with a, oh yeah, that's right, expression, and nod their heads in agreement. Daniel, a tall, athletic-built Asian stuntman, rolls his eyes and looks away. Right, right, Tunisia, yeah, she'd be great. Sick videos. Candace, with a, I told you so, satisfying look on her face, turns and looks back at Albert, meeting him eye to eye. Was Tunisia not available? I don't know. I don't know her. Is she a newbie? At this point, Candace had pulled out her phone and was looking Tunisia up on IMDb. There she is. 64 stunt credits, so not a newbie. And here's a reel. Look at her. She would be a great double. Looks at Marcus. Do you have her number? Marcus nods yes. Candace turns back again, looks Albert in the eye. Good. Give her a call. See if she's available. Now. Look, for safety reasons, I don't know. I've never worked with her before. I really need to go with someone I know I can trust and is safe. And I've never worked with you before. That's not a criteria for not working together. And it looks like at least 64 other people felt she was safe and trustworthy enough to hire her. So, how about going with someone who not only has the skill set, but, in accordance with union procedures, is an ethnic match with the actor and the character said actor is portraying and not do a paint down? That should be considered too, right? But I do agree with you on hiring people you can trust. Albert turns to Marcus. What's her number? Interior, stunt team holding area, inside warehouse, few hours later. 
Johnny has moved his chair off to the left of the circle and is sitting forward on his chair, hunched over, playing an intense shooter video game on his phone. Daniel is restless and keeps getting up, does some front kicks to keep him awake and sits back down. Raymond has pulled another chair in front of him, puts his feet up and is napping. Mary is out of wardrobe and has on her own clothes, jeans and a t-shirt with the word, I do my own stunts on it. Mary is sitting, texting on her phone. Marcus has taken out a drawing pad and pencil and is working on a new anime character he's developing for a comic he is creating. In a slightly stressed state, Tunisia rushes over to the stunt team holding area. She's wearing the costume and a wig like the one we saw Mary in earlier. She plops herself down in the chair next to Marcus, dropping her very large stunt bag on the floor. Wow, that was the quickest hair and makeup I've ever had. Ah, oh, just so glad I was able to get here fast. Tunisia gives herself two deep breaths and turns with an enthusiastic look and gives Marcus a hug. Oh, thank you so much, Marcus. Looking down at Marcus's drawing. Impressive. Oh man, that's nice. Where are they at in shooting? Tunisia bends down by Marcus's chair and starts to go through her stunt bag. She already has on her knees and elbow pads. She's looking for something else. Marcus is watching in amazement as Tunisia pulls items from her bag. In her search in her stunt bag, Tunisia pulls out a hip pad, a back support, and two wigs. She flings the items on the floor and then stops. She's found what she's looking for and pulls out a grip squeeze ball. All good, thanks. Glad to help. I'm sorry, what is that? Marcus reaches down and picks up one of Tunisia's wigs as if he was holding a wet, dirty towel. What? It's my wigs. Tunisia reaches over and snatches her wig back out of Marcus's hand and starts putting her items, with the exception of the grip squeeze ball, back into her stunt bag. I know they're wigs. Why do you have them in your stunt bag? Going out after we wrap? Please. Going out? No. A black woman has to carry wigs with her on set. They rarely have people in hair and makeup that know how to do black hair. Just gets to be so frustrating. Tired of dealing with those battles, so bring my own wigs. Hell, most African-American scent women bring their own wigs to set. What? Really? Tanisha sighs and nods her head. That's messed up. Well, anyway, they switched the shooting schedule to give you time to get here. They still have some dialogue to film. Then we're up. Yeah, that's cool. Here all day. Overtime. They really don't have people know how to do your hair? You have no idea. Tanisha stands up from her stunt bag, squeezing her grip ball, turns to the stunt team in holding, and addresses the room. Hello, men. The guys give their hey and hellos. Mary stands up from sitting on the floor behind a chair. Tanisha did not notice her and was not expecting to see Mary still on set. Hey, Tanisha. A shocked Tanisha gives a quick and surprised look at Marcus. Safety. The two women start to make an awkward approach towards each other to do the customary hug. Oh, hey, Mary. Anything I should know? At a hurried pace, Albert enters the stunt holding area. Tunisia turns around. Albert sees Tunisia is already there and dressed. Albert goes over to Tunisia with a hesitant handshake and introduces himself. Tunisia, hi, I'm Albert Morgan. Thanks for being here. So glad you were able to make it in such short notice. Hello. Yeah, I rushed over. Took a lift. Thanks for having me. As the two are shaking hands, Albert's eyes look past Tunisia and sees Mary standing behind Tunisia. Albert's eyes nervously darts back between Mary and Tanisha. Well, it's going to be a fun day. Daniel is the fight captain. He'll be going over the choreography with you. Albert backs up a bit and addresses the stunt team. I have to run over to first unit, but you guys will be fine. You're not up for a while now. Looking at Daniel in a more concerned way. Make sure she knows the fight. Turning to Tanisha in a different kind of concerned way. You're fine with fighting, right? And all you have to do with the fabric is a drop. Uh, Do you need Mary to set that up for you? Tanisha feels everyone is watching her, the new girl. She straightens her posture a little, like a ballerina about to enter from the wings. Yes, good with fighting. Always training. I have a red sash in Kung Fu and a black belt in Taekwondo. I'm all set with fabric drop as well. Having toured, doing 10 shows a week for two years, performing on static trapeze and silks, I have plenty of drops to pull from. What would you like? A cartwheel drop or more of a roll? These terms are foreign to Albert. We'll take a look at what you have on the day. I'll be back to look at the fight. Albert gives another glance back to Daniel and leaves the area. Daniel crosses to Tunisia. Okay, let's do this. It's a fight with me and Marcus. Daniel starts to move the chairs around, creating more space to rehearse. With a sigh, he's not that enthusiastic about teaching Tunisia this fight. 
the sound of moving chairs wakes Raymond up from his nap. Looking back at Tanisha. TKD, right? Good, because it has a lot of kicks. As Tanisha pulls and stretches her legs, warming up to learn the fight choreograph, Mary approaches Tanisha. She needs something to do to feel important. Story-wise, Raymond is your partner. He's up on another section fighting Johnny. He throws a backpack down to you. The backpack has a valuable item in it, and you have to get it up to the ladder in order to make your escape. Daniel has finished setting up the chairs, placing two chairs together at the far end of the holding area with an open space in the middle. Daniel picks up a stunt duffel bag and walks over to Tunisia and Mary. The two chairs over there is the ladder you gotta climb to get to the upper truss. That's where you do your fabric drop. But you gotta get by me and Marcus first. I'm guarding the ladder, Marcus on the opposite side. The fight starts with Raymond tossing you the backpack. Daniel drops the duffel bag on the floor. Off to the side, Raymond sits on a chair that has been moved against the wall. And I just say, go! Go! You pick up the backpack and swipe at Marcus. These are hits. Left, then right. Tunisia picks up the duffel bag as Marcus steps into the fighting distance of Tunisia. Tunisia swipes the duffel bag left, then right. Interior, stunt team holding area inside warehouse, one hour later. For the past hour, Daniel has been teaching Tunisia the choreography of the fight between Tunisia, Daniel, and Marcus. Tunisia picks up choreography fast and well. She has learned all of the fight. Mary has been watching with an occasional interjection of an unnecessary note for Tunisia. Well, you got it. Looks good to me. Any concerns? How about you, Daniel? Daniel looks inconvenienced and still skeptical regarding Tunisia's abilities. But since she's the person he has to fight, he gives his shoulders a shrug. Yeah, it's fine. I just need to see more power from your kicks. You're fighting two big guys. Tunisia feels a little deflated. She's not sure if her kicks are really lacking in power, or if Daniel's telling her that just to say something, or both. Copy that. More power. Let's run it again. Hey, Marcus, can I try something with you? Instead of two cut kicks, I'll do one cut kick, then a sliding side kick? Intrigued by the suggested change, Marcus visualizes the change that Tunisia suggested and smiles. Yeah, I like that. That'll be good. Let's give it a try. Tunisia, Daniel, and Marcus run the fight, this time with the changes Tunisia suggested. When Tunisia delivers the cut kick, then a sliding kick to Marcus, Marcus takes a bigger reaction to the kick and stumbles back with a great force, knocking over a couple of folding chairs he didn't realize were behind him. Oh, that was good. I like that one better. Great shot. Mary, who had walked over to her stunt bag and had been checking her phone while the kick change was being discussed, rushes over to Tunisia in a fury. What are you doing? Are you okay, Marcus? That's not the choreography. It's not a sidekick. See, this is what happens when people get all overjealous. It becomes dangerous. With an annoyed and confused look on his face, Marcus stands still, just looking at Mary. What are you talking about? We're trying something different. It's a change. I hit the chairs because I hit the chairs. I didn't see them and I went into the chairs. Calm down. What do you think? I say we keep it. I like the flow of it better and it looks more powerful. Yeah, keep it. It does work better. Oh, for sure. Definitely keep the sidekick. Good idea, Tunisia. Tunisia, proud of herself, gives a big smile. Thanks. Yeah, that felt good. Love my job. Yeah, yeah, I get it. You took my gig. That's all right. I'm still on the clock of safety and a backup, just in case. So, I still got my day. I took your gig? I'm not mad at you. Al did call me first. I get it. It's all about politics. They have to be all PC about it, no matter the cost and consequences. The energy of the holding area has shifted. There is a tense calm that has come over. Marcus shakes his head and walks over to his drawing pad. Johnny's playing his video game, but has taken one earbud out of his ear. Daniel, looking ignored, goes over to his stunt bag, grabs some water, and sits down. Raymond puts his feet back up on the chair and pretends to go back asleep. What PC? The character is black, the actor is black, and you are not. It's about fair and just representation. Well, actually, Claire is half black. I've doubled mixed actors before. I'm just representing the white side of the actor. Tunisia is stunned. She is a little lost for words and starts to squeeze her grip ball more intensely. Raymond opens one eye. Johnny is in thought, considering what Mary just said. Daniel nods a yep in agreement. Marcus stops drawing and drops his head. Oh, Lord. It's not just about the ethnic background. It's qualification. Doing an aerial silks routine and a fight is a specialized skill. Cutting Mary off. Do you think you're more qualified than me? Look, no offense. Yes, I am an extremely experienced aerialist with fight training and all the other expected stunt skill sets. Sorry, that's just the way it is. How would you know? How would I know what? 
Oh, boy. What makes you think you're a more qualified aerialist than I am? Or are you just assuming based on... Uh, I don't know. Based on what? I... I Look, it's about safety as well. It's not about just being politically correct. You have to have experienced, qualified people to perform these stunts, and the stunt coordinator knows and trusts. It's people's lives at stake. The coordinator is going to go with someone he knows and trusts. That's the important thing. And when the stunt coordinator doesn't know any black people, when that white person in charge does not know many people of color, does that mean we don't exist? That there is no one black with a certain skill set and ability? All because, well... I don't know any. I can name. Hell, name and give you the numbers of at least eight classically trained black pianists and violinists. Can you? Well, I don't play an instrument. So, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. You don't know any black pianist, so they must not exist. Oh, come on. Marcus, head down, still working on his drawing. The picture is changing shape and starting to look like a superhero. I get it. I feel you, sis. People like to assume what we're capable of, what skill set you have based on assumption, like we aren't capable of doing certain things. What did they say? There are no black people who can play tennis? Not true. Play golf? Not true. Ride a horse or a motorcycle? Not true. Gymnastic, ice skating, and aerialists? Not true. Hell, they even said that once about football, basketball, and baseball. So not true. A silence falls on the room. Raymond sits up, yawns, and stretches his arms up as if waking up in the morning. Marcus looks up from his pad and pencil and looks over at Raymond. Dude, what? I just want to work. T is telling the T. We don't get as much work, so I don't make waves. From across the room, Daniel is doing his forms. There is a power and snap in his punches. He's working out some frustrations. Johnny had to stop playing his video game, taking his earbud out of his ear, and put away his phone. You ever seen that Audrey Hepburn movie, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's? Man, she was a class act. Beautiful. But they had this white guy, Mickey Rourke. No, Mickey Rooney, to play the Japanese photographer, Mr. Yunioshi. I mean, really. Why? Because there were no Japanese males who could act? Fuck that noise. Messed up. Over the walk, you hear... Last shot for this setup, then we're moving on to scene six, stunts. I've been sitting here all day. I'm going to go stretch and get ready. It's a cool fight. Johnny stands up and moves to the back of his chair and starts to do some head rolls and leg swings. Tunisia and the other stunt guys stand and start to move around and stretch in preparation for the upcoming fight scene. Mary turns and sits down on a chair. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to argue with you about it. You got the gig. You just don't seem to get it. Albert was heading into the holding area, about to tell the team that they will be up soon. He hears Tunisia, stops short, right out of view, and listens. What it's like for a black woman? A woman of color in the entertainment industry? Don't get me wrong, I love what I do. I absolutely love being a stunt performer. This is the only job that I welcome waking up at 3 a.m. for. But things... Situations, attitudes, and opportunities are different for me than it is for you. You don't realize it because it's not your reality. It is just as hard for me as it is for you. And for some reason, you want to question what my reality, my truth is. As if. Okay, so please tell me what it's like for you as a black stunt woman in the industry today. You know. Not getting to work on a show because you could not double the blonde hair, blue-eyed female actor on the show. Oh, wait. You just don't get it. How disrespectful and rude you're being. What are you talking about? I haven't done anything to you. Not to me. To the actor. A slap in the face. You mean blackface? Yeah, that's how it feels. The actor, day in, day out, working hard to get a foot in the door. You're too black. You're not black enough. We already have a black character. Do you realize how few and far between a role for a black female character comes along for an actor? Not the maid. Not the prostitute. Not the TSA worker with attitude. A role. A character with heart and substance. That is not a common occurrence. And finally, when it does... To have a decent character that's a person of color that looks like that person you see in the mirror? For all those black and brown young women to see someone who looks like them up there on the screen. Wow, that feeling. 
Do you know that feeling? And then, after all of that struggle, and what would you think of the progress? Not only for the actor, but also for another person of color. The opportunity for a black stunt woman. Our opportunities are in the numbers less. Then it happens. Casting of a black female character, and then for it to be whitewashed away? Hello, actor, who worked so hard and never gave up. Here is a character that is a person of color but we are still going to have a white person represent you for the part of it. Yeah, a disrespectful, rude, hurtful slap in the face. I didn't hire me. The stunt coordinator booked me on the gig. If there isn't a person of color around who can do the gig, that's not on me. There's a person of color who can do the job. Viola Davis said, the only thing that separates women from color from anyone else is opportunity. And that opportunity has been once again, and wrongfully so, denied. You're not black. And not knowing that is on you. I am a well-trained professional stunt woman. Fights, falls, driving, acting, all. I have a black belt in Taekwondo, and yes, I am an aerialist. I toured for two years performing silks with Universal Soul Circus. I know my shit. It's on my resume, on my reel. Oh, I love that clip you posted of you doing that fabric thing. Man, beautiful. So fucking high up. Next level. Thank you. I appreciate that you took the time and watched my clip. I mean, really, I'm on all of the stunt sites. But they read the breakdown and then assume what I can or can't do. Well, maybe he didn't have time to look. Oh, they look at the color of my skin and don't read beyond that. Albert walks into the stunt team holding area. For the first time, Albert realizes the dynamics of his position. He is the boss, the head of the department, but looking around at his team, he is the only white guy. He is the minority. He gives Tunisia a nervous smile. Okay, team, we're up. The stunt team grab their stunt bags and start to head to set. Claire, 26, slim athletic build, cafe au lait and complexion, principal actor wearing the same wardrobe as Tunisia, is headed back to her chair by Video Village as she approaches the stunt team heading to set. Here they are, the superstars. Love what you guys do. You guys rock. Tunisia, seeing the actor with the same wardrobe on as herself, realizes this is Claire. Tunisia goes up to introduce herself. Excuse me. Hey, we haven't met yet. Hi, I'm Tunisia. I'm your stunt double today. Claire opens her arms and gives Tunisia a hug. Oh, hello. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you. You're doing all the dangerous stuff to make me look good. A medium two shot of Claire and Tunisia over Claire's shoulder. Stay on Tunisia's face, then pan down to Claire, squeezing Tunisia's hand. Claire reaches down and takes Tunisia's hand into both of her hands and gives them a loving squeeze. I'm so glad you're here. Tunisia smiles and starts to head out. As they are exiting the stunt holding area, Tunisia turns to Mary. And I know how to swim. Fade out. Cut to... Tunisia is performing a full aerial fabric act. 